practice. Oh, you just go to the temple, shave your head, put on funny clothes, dance around, jump around a lot, and uh, you know, follow the external rituals, and then, then, and then you're a devotee. No, no. That is the smallest part of being a devotee. The biggest part of being a devotee is internal consciousness. Krishna consciousness. Huh? We're going to keep reminding you until you get it. <laughs> It's not an external process. It's a process of consciousness. So you have to know what consciousness is and how to work with consciousness. Otherwise, the whole thing is meaningless. So uh, the uh, sadhana tattva brahma is one part, but then the sadhya tattva brahma is the other part. What is the objective? The means is the sadhana. The objective is the sadhya. So we must be clear about the objective of devotional service. Why are we doing all these activities? Uh, just to, to get some pious activities? Just to overcome our material problems? Uh, just to get some mystic powers? Or just to become one with God? Why are we doing all this sadhana? None of the above. The purpose of our sadhana is to develop love. Love of Krishna, ecstatic love, prema, uh, pure love, not contaminated by any material consideration or quality. Uh, that's prema, prema bhakti, pure devotional service. That's the actual sadhya, the actual aim of this process. If we misunderstand the aim, then the danger is that we will desire something wrong. Just like last night we were talking about how devotional service is a desire tree. Whatever we desire, if we approach Krishna through devotional service, Krishna will give us that desire. And if we desire something other than prema bhakti, we'll get that, but we won't get prema. The example is Dhruva Maharaj. Uh, Dhruva Maharaj was cheated out of his father's kingdom. And so he decided to approach the Lord for relief. So he sat down and he started doing sadhana with the desire. Of course, he was only a five-year five -year old boy. So what can you expect? But still, he sat down with the desire to attain his father's kingdom. And he performed devotional service, and he finally saw the Lord face to face. So then the Lord said, I give you the benediction that you will attain your father's kingdom. And he said, no, no, actually, I don't want that. I thought in the beginning that was a good idea. But now seeing you, that seems like just ordinary stones next to a valuable jewel. So I don't want this anymore. I just want you. I want your devotional service. And the Lord informed Dhruva Maharaj, well, you sat down and you did devotional service with this strong desire. So I have to award the result. I have to award this benediction because that's what you asked for while doing the process of devotional service. You see? The process of devotional service is infallible. So whatever you ask for, you will get. The trick is not to ask for something that's impermanent. Uh, not to ask for something material, but to ask for the highest thing, which is pure love of Krishna, pure devotional service, prema bhakti. Uh, we have to have this concept firmly in mind. When we sit down to chant, when we do different kinds of service, when we preach especially, we have to have in mind that the goal, the sadhya, is prema bhakti and not anything else. To the extent that we deviate from this, we cheat ourselves and we cheat the people that we're preaching to by giving them some wrong conception of devotional service. Huh? So this is an anarta. If we do this, this is an anarta. 
Finally, Maya Tattva Brahma. Illusion about the Lord's external energy, Maya. And what is the illusion about that? Well, there's so many illusions we can have about it. First of all, we can think that it's very nice. <laughs> Maya is not very nice. Huh? Because Maya is temporary, or at least the manifestation of Maya. Maya herself is eternal, because all the Lord's potencies are completely spiritual. So the potency of Maya, the external energy, is eternal and spiritual. But the manifestation of Maya is temporary and material. So we don't want this. We want the Lord's internal energy. Huh? Yoga Maya. The external energy is Maha Maya, the great illusion. The internal energy is Yoga Maya, or the illusion in relationship with the Lord. Now, why is it called illusion? Because in the relationship in the spiritual world, the Lord becomes the, uh, the master, or he becomes the friend, or the son, or the lover of the devotee. Now, is the Lord actually the son or lover of the devotee? No. The Lord is the supreme personality of Godhead at all times. But... Out of love for his devotee, he assumes the role of the devotee's friend, lover, uh, son, and so on. You see? So this is an illusion. But it's an illusion in relationship with the Lord, which is yoga. Yoga means to, be, uh, to have our consciousness in relation with the supreme consciousness. So when we are in relationship with the Lord, this is yoga. Yoga maya. Huh? In a sense, it's an illusion, but because it's eternal, it's real. So that's the kind of relationship we want, not Mahamaya relationship. Mahamaya always means temporary. We don't want that kind of relationship. Uh, so if we think that the external energy is very nice, huh, that is an anartha because it's going to lead to our falling down. Yeah. Can you fix up the fire a little bit? It's gotten, the fire is, uh, yeah, it needs to, yeah, thank you. So uh, another, re another illusion we can have about the external energy, maya, uh, is that we can think we can conceive of our identity in terms of maya, in terms of the external energy. And this would be that, you know, it's kind of a combination of several of these anarthas. So we should avoid these anarthas. This, this class is basically the class of being in illusion. Huh? We don't want to be in illusion. Is there a question? No, no. So just to add. Get the mic. Just to add something in regards to this anarta, that uh, also the feeling that, oh, I can control Maya now because I'm a devotee, Oops. now I can control. Yeah. Like uh, devotees who think, I can associate with women, no problem, and it's just a neophyte, and then it's fall down, things like that. I can handle lots of money and power because I'm already a devotee. But then it's so much Maya that then it's overwhelming. So Prabhupada always displayed or any pure, pure devotee always displays uh, like very, very cautious towards Maya, mm -hmm. towards illusion. Even they're liberated and everything, and then they're always like, "No, careful, take your distance." <laughs> yeah. Liberated soul means they've learned their lesson. <laughs> they don't want Maya. Uh, they only want Krishna. So they would be very cautious about any association with Maya because they know how dangerous Maya is. If, if, you, uh, if you know, how, uh, let's say, take a poisonous snake, for example. If you know this is a coral snake or something. It's a very poisonous snake. Huh? You're not going to be like, pretty snake, nice snake. You know. <laughs> I mean, uh, there are 
there are so many instances of great yogis and devotees who fell down because they got in too much involved with maya. And uh, so we should be very cautious about maya, even in the advanced or maybe especially in the advanced stages, because in those stages, maya is going to test us. So we, our attitude should always be, well, actually, I don't want to be associated with maya. Even Prahlad Maharaj, he said, I am afraid of maya. See, the Lord was trying to give him a benediction when Lord Nirshingha Dev appeared. He said, I'll give you any benediction you want. <laughs> and uh, Prahlad said, oh, no, actually, I, I don't want any benediction. The pure devotees are always like that. The pure devotees don't want any service from the Lord. They don't want any benediction from the Lord. They only want to serve the Lord. They only want to love the Lord. They only want to give 